Greetings everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing the dumbest build I can come up with for the Nidarian Defender. And if you don't like that, well just consider that I am flying a sentient jellyfish, so common sense went out the window a long time ago. But anyway, we have a pet and summonable ally focused build today and it's surprisingly effective mostly due to the fact that the console that comes with this ship that turns you into aforementioned jellyfish mode is actually really good and frankly no one saw it coming including myself but other people have tested it and i've tested it now and it's true this thing does a lot of damage in jellyfish mode what about that? Well, when you're in jellyfish mode, it uses your weapon power. So I thought, if we're just going to be in jellyfish mode, we don't need weapons. After all, I'm not going to be using it in Roswell mode, as I like to call it, the stereotypical UFO mode. So we have no weapons on this ship. Absolutely none. We're completely defenseless as far as anyone's concerned. And all of our console slots and everything and all of our traits are all designed to give us as many summonable allies as possible. There are probably some things I'm missing. Maybe I don't have them. But you'll have to let me know in the comments down below. For the deck set, I just threw the revolutionary set on there just so I would have something so we can get around and have shields and whatever. Okay, let's talk about the device slots. We have some Peregrine Fighters, and you can get these from the Phoenix store. Of course, if you're not Federation, you're going to get Toju or whatever, Scorpions, uh, whatever your faction variant is. And these are consumable. They have like 20 charges, and they will summon a uh, 3 uh, level 66 or whatever your level is, plus 1 fighters and you can have up to six max so even though we have no hangar bays we can get some peregrines that way we also have the kobayashi maru transponder which is uh, not a great pet but it does come in and give out some buffs and stuff we have the ultimate modified swarm processor it summons a permanent pet auto deploy an ultimate drone to assist 30 second recharge if it gets destroyed this is a bane of my existence for demo record because it always gets in the way of the uh, cinematic shots and I have to go back and take it off the ship and then reshoot it because I keep forgetting that I have it equipped and it ends up getting in the way. We have the Nidarian console that comes with the ship, turns us into jellyfish mode that we kind of need that. I have a car's vengeance which doesn't give us any pets but it does give us max weapon power and which I think affects the damage of the jellyfish mode. I'm not sure 100%, but it does, the clicky does electrical damage, and I figured that was thematic enough. We have reinforcing squadrons. The clicky will launch four tactical fighter squadrons to harass foes, so that's one way to get some pets. We have bombing run, which will summon some artillery sh uh, ships, so that's some more things we can summon there. We have render visible. Decloaks a Nakjej battle cruiser that will ram into your target and fly around for a short duration. We have a couple of the Cardassian consoles, the Cardassian mobile torpedo platform, so that's going to summon a uh, satellite, and the Cardassian support platform cluster, which is also going to summon a satellite. Defensive drone guardians, which will launch four level 66 drone guardians. We have the Prior's World Elite Defense Satellite, so that's going to give us another satellite. We have the Repair Platform, which is going to launch a repair platform. And from the Jim Hadar Vanguard Carrier, we have the Link Command Matrix, which will summon a heavy attack craft to aid us in battle. So with these powers combined, we are Captain Planet, and we're going to have a whole bunch of summonable allies at our disposable while we're in jellyfish mode but that's not the end of it because we also have a couple of traits to help us out as well hive defenses is a personal space trait when taking damage summon three herc swarmers to assist in combat for up to 45 seconds for the starship traits we have greater than the sum which for self and allies and that allies includes all of our summonable stuff not just hangar pets and whatever that's going to give a max power level and hull and shields and so it's going to help support all of the stuff that we're summoning. Heard I needed help, absolutely terrible trait, but we do have Aux to Civ on the ship which is a healing ability. 
and whenever we're below 50% whole, when we hit Ox to Civ, it's going to summon a pet to help us out. We have History We'll Remember, which is basically just here so we don't die because we are going to be going into Elite Difficulty. We have Subspace Reinforcements, create an Alachi Support Craft for 30 seconds after taking a large amount of damage. So we're going to be able to get some Alachi Support Crafts. And then we have Wild Weasel from the Adamant. When using evasive maneuvers or intel abilities, it will create a Wild Weasel Shuttle for uh, 20 seconds. So we have lots and lots of ways to summon pets and satellites and allies of all different kinds. Let's see it in action in an elite Argala run. All right, we're here in Argala and let's go ahead and defeat these Kazon cruisers. We're gonna switch into jellyfish mode right now. We're not gonna use most of our stuff for the time being simply because uh, we wanna save it for some of the bigger groups, but that's okay. We do plenty of damage even in without uh, launching all of our satellites or our craft. Some of the stuff we can do. The uh, heavy assault craft will stay with us until the end. We may as well get some of the peregrines going. We may as well launch the Kobayashi Maru. And you can see we're doing uh, thousands of damage per second to these uh, various enemies here. We got the swarmers coming out, so that's doing pretty good as well. And this cruiser is getting ready to go down. Let's take a look at the other one. It is already defeated as well. So we should be hearing from the Benthans any moment now about the fact that uh, we need to be deputized. And we've already entered a uh, combat range. So we're gonna go ahead and use evasive maneuvers. I don't think it really does all that much we seem to be moving pretty slowly but that's okay we are starting to fry these k's on here let's go ahead and launch uh, some of our stuff just gonna go ahead and get this stuff launched as much as we can and uh, we were able to take out that group of five enemies without any real struggle or challenge at all you can see hits here into the tens of thousands 45,000 50,000 we are chalking up the damage quite nicely. All right, we can see all of our pets, all of our various different swarmers, our support craft, all going towards this Kazon carrier here, including our, um, our heavy attack craft here. So all of our pets are engaging. We are not engaging right now. We do not have full impulse all of our sort of different uh, things that might give us a speed boost aren't really doing too much for us here. We're still pretty far out. All right, we've made it to the final group, Maj Kola's flagship, and let's just go ahead and launch everything that we possibly can. The cruiser should be going down any moment now. They're both getting quite low here. That cruiser went down, that cruiser went down, and the only thing left now is the Mullah's ship. Down to 44% and falling, 22%, 10, and he's down for the count. We have successfully completed an Elite Argala without any weapons or any real useful consoles or traits whatsoever using nothing but the jellyfish mode along with a bunch of ridiculous summonables. So that's my video on the Nidarian Defender. I think this is a perfectly acceptable way to have some fun with a very goofy ship. Thank you very much for watching. Special thank you to all my channel members. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.